time of the webinar. Um, my name is Joanna Burke and I'm one of the two LEGO Education Certified Teacher Trainers at Modern Teaching Aids. The other teacher trainer is James Dwyer who is on the chat function and joining him is Chris Todd, a school rep and he's based on the Sunshine Coast in Queensland um, and Chris is also passionate about robotics um, and the use of in the classroom. And I'm sure between James and Chris, they'll look after you and they'll be answering any questions and are making a list to be saved until the end of question time. So um, for me, this is obviously very different format as well. I'm so used to and have been for even in a day running face-to-face -face workshops. So to be actually talking to a light the size of a pinhole is um, clearly tells me these times are in fact very different for all of us. So first of all, um, I'd just like to give you an idea of what we, we will be covering in today's webinar. Um, so we're going to look at the spike prime kit or set, obviously, um, with the sensors and the programmable hub. We're going to have a look at the software uh, and explore the unit plans. Now the unit plans for me are a really awesome addition to um, the software and the app. I think that Lego have done an extremely good job. So when you've had a look at them, I, I hope you agree with me. Um, then we're going to demonstrate a unit, or I'm going to demonstrate a unit, uh, Super Cleanup. And then during that time, as looking at the software and the unit plans and the app, I'll demonstrate the Scratch-based programming. And after that, we'll have a look at the online support materials, which again are going to make it so much easier for you as a teacher in the classroom with lesson plans. And then we'll have a Q&A session at the end. And um, obviously, as I said, we're going to be um, having answers during using the chat function, which is Alt-H. So actually, but before we start, I'd like to give you a quick idea of the concept behind the development of Spike, which I think is um, probably quite helpful to know. Um, so Spike Prime is a really perfect addition to the LEGO education product family, um, targeted for years five to eight. Um, however, um, I sort of feel, and I'm sure others would agree with me that have used it, uh, that you can certainly use it for younger years. Um, I have seen it used in year four quite successfully, but you as a teacher would know that, you'd know your students and, and you'll know exactly where it is to fit. I mean, some will specifically buy for year six, some may use it in high school. Um, I had one teacher say to me in a workshop that she was really glad that she could use it for her years seven and eights because it was giving them another avenue for scratch. So, um, and you know, it's, it's going to be something that you'll make that decision for. However, it sits nicely between We Do 2.0 and EB3. Um, if you're not familiar with either both or one of those platforms, um, we do 2.0 is for younger students and it has an emphasis on science and coding and one obviously that I really love. Uh, the EV3 is the third version of Mindstorms. Um, so that sort of has always offered a low point of entry. Um, it's easy to get started and then a high ceiling um, right through to the world of computer science. So primary, secondary and uni. However, um, there's been a concern for quite a while from teachers that the gap, um, and everywhere actually, you know, Australia, New Zealand and around the world, um, there's been this, there's, there's a gap between We Do 2.0 and EV3, which is too much of a jump for many students. So this is where Spike Prime fits. And um, it's giving that extra confidence, I think, to students and teachers. And, that's what it's all about with Lego and Spike Prime is giving confidence. Confidence for you as a teacher to be able to pick it up and run with it in the classroom and one that the students are just gonna to take to. So for me in particular, girls, I mean clearly as well as boys. So from the ground up, it really has been designed with Lego education's core philosophy in mind, which is, and if you haven't read it already, it's been sitting on the screen there, um, that play is essential to learning and building confidence. Now that philosophy is um, based on Seymour Papert's theory of constructionism, 
which is the idea that children learn best when they're actively engaged in constructing something um, that has personal meaning to them. I'm sure that you are all very familiar with that, uh, be it a poem, a robot, a sandcastle, or a computer program. So we all know, and especially you as teachers, um, know that it's always optimal to have students engaged in hands-on and playful activities. It's going to mean what you're doing in the classroom. It's going to make it so much easier. So to that end, um, the Lego Foundation also re researched the common characteristics of playful experiences and boiled them down to these five characteristics that you can see there. Uh, joyful, meaningful, engaging, iterative, and socially interactive. So joyful for me, it's always great to watch students taking ownership and um, there's never much problem with that when they're using uh, robotics and especially initiative in their learning. Uh, I know from experience in running workshops with um, a lot of the students, if not the teachers, that it's hard to get them to take a break. Uh, often they don't want to even go out and have recess, I mean, lunch, um, and then even at the end of the day, it's hard to get them out and go home. We want to get them to get fresh air, they don't want to have fresh air. Um, and as far as uh, teacher workshops, the same thing. Um, we might want to stop and have a coffee or something, but uh, clearly they don't. So um, if it's like that, then it means it's become very meaningful to them. So there's not, not an issue there. They're actively engaged um, whilst they keep going over tasks to try and achieve the results they want. So they're constantly problem solving and bouncing ideas off each other. And um, we see this time and time, and I'm, I don't think there hasn't been a robotics group that I haven't come across that aren't bouncing ideas off each other, that aren't constantly problem solving. Um, it's iterative, so they are always predicting something's gonna happen, or they're comparing, um, they're experimenting. I don't think they realize they're doing this all the time. They're definitely testing, and then at the end of it, they're chatting about things and they're reflecting on what's happened. So, and then in the end, definitely, but definitely socially interactive. So um, it just ticks all those boxes for it. So however, um, teaching STEM or STEAM can be challenging. And as I've mentioned, Spike Prime was developed with that in mind, um, to be innovative, which I believe it really is. And again, um, hopefully you'll find that out if you haven't already, and it's engaging. Um, the idea behind all this all the time is as Lego have been wanting to um, build that confidence in teachers and students. Now, for me in, in particular, it offers quick building, plenty of connection points. Um, I really need that because um, I'm definitely no master builder and I need a lot of help with building. I mean, I love Lego, but building has never been my forte. And so therefore, um, what I've seen with Spike Prime has had a huge appeal to me. Um, it's obviously very appealing to girls because it's extremely colorful. So I'm gonna show you some of that soon and um, I think you'll see that. For me, um, I had it with a group of girls and they said to me, wow, this is awesome, we can build with this. And they said, and they said it reminds us of friends. Now they may not have been using Lego friends actually then, but it reminds us of friends. So um, I recall Marita Ching, who was Young Australian of the Year for 2012. She was founder of Robo Girls. And um, I remember a video I used to show all the time, but it had particular, um, she had an emphasis on encouraging girls to maybe look at a career in engineering. And I would really think that given the current climate, engineers are what Australia is really going to need going forward. And it would be great um, if a percentage of those or a higher percentage of those were females. I have no idea what it is now, but I know back then um, it, the ratio wasn't brilliant. So um, that would be good. Anyway, let's get started. So um, what do you need to... Um, Okay, so what do you need to get started? So, these are the components of the Lego Education Spike Prime solution that you need. One of them is the set and uh, the Spike Prime set. 
and the other is the Spike app. Now, um, I'm going to start with the hardware first and then we're going to move over to the app. So with the hardware itself, there is one so Spike Prime set. However, there is another set that's available and then an expansion set, which you do not need other than for about three of the unit plans. And that's when you get to the competition that you need for the activities that you would use in the classroom for this. But I'll talk about that after. So one set supports two students. Um, for as long as I've been working with Lego Resources, it doesn't matter what um, product it's been, that's always been the way that Lego sets have been developed. Uh, however, obviously it depends on your budget. Um, one, one set between two is optimum, um, but because you, you don't like people missing, or students missing out. However, uh, if they're preparing for a robotics competition and there are a few more in the set, uh, in the team, then you can have one set maybe sharing a group of three or four students because they've all got different roles to play. So that's a different situation. So I'm just looking at the set up there for now before I um, switch on to another screen. You'll see that the hardware comes in a yellow box, plastic container. Um, and then it's showing you there two um, sorting trays. Now they've introduced two sorting trays in this rather than the standard one. And that's really good for classroom and set management. I, I, for me, this is brilliant and it works really well. I mean, if you do have to share it with more than two students, then it does work well for that point of view. So in here, we've got um, what happens is the, comp the compartments themselves hold special elements. Now, all those elements are packed into eight individual bags. And you'll see there, there are eight, um, obviously, compartments. So the idea is you'll get your eight bags numbered and you'll put them into the correct uh, location. Now, um, to know that correct location, you're actually supplied with a sheet of stickers and you can get that sticker and you can place it on the side of the tray, as you can see there, and then you know where to go. The other good thing about it is for the first time, there's actually a spare parts bag that's included. That doesn't have a number. Can I suggest that you don't mix it up with all your other bits when you, when elements, when you get it, that you just put it aside. Maybe um, when you've numbered your sets, you should actually put the number of the set that the spare parts bag has come out of, and then that will, that will help you. Now they sit on the top of the set and then underneath that, you'll see there you've got some motors, the sensors and the hub, and then the larger elements sit underneath. Now, um, it, probably what I want to do is just show you something because it's not showing there. And that is, um, this is the uh, laminated card that sits on the top of the box when you get it. And um, the uh, sorting trays, so on the flip side of it is the inventory. And the sorting trays are shown there. And you can actually see, it tells you where they actually all belong. So numbers one to eight. And then around the outside are the Lego elements. And then obviously the sensors and the hub sit at the bottom there. And you've also got a little quick measuring guide. So I think that's a really awesome little um, thing to get into because uh, I think it's important to know those things, especially when you're first setting up. And so what I'm going to um, then do after that is we're going to have a look at the hub and the motors and the sensors. And um, as far as the hub goes, um, you've got a bit of a bonus here because inside is a six axis gyro sensor, which allows for many more programming possibilities, um, which also obviously includes an accelerometer. So I'm gonna come back to that shortly. Um, then you'll see that uh, we've got the sensors here. And again, I'm gonna show you those again in a minute, um, but we have a force sensor. Um, we've got a light and color sensor and a distance sensor. And then on this side, you actually receive three motors. So we have a large motor and then you have two medium motors. Now, the good thing about the motors as well is that they have an integrated rotation sensor um, and absolute positioning. So, it can tell where, so they can tell where the rotation is located um, and that's really going to open up the opportunities from really good, simple maths activities that you can do. Um, 
However, for all of that aside, one of the best things for me is that they can fit easily into um, the frames and a build, as you can see, and when I show you even more, I'll probably repeat myself a million times about that, because I love it, they're nice and compact, they've been squared off, and they have plenty of connection points. Um, for those of you familiar with EV3, you'll probably understand more what I'm talking about when I say they've been squared off and there's no extra protruding points anywhere. So, um, but now what I'm going to um, do is after that, so straight after we've looked at the hardware, um, I'm then gonna take you into the app and we'll actually work through the um, unit plans and I will have shown you the software working with the sensors. So what I'm going to do now is um, stop sharing this and I'm going to actually uh, show you very quickly some of the Lego elements that I think I should introduce you to um, because they knew and then we're going to have a look at the uh, motors and the sensors um, then with the hub and then go on into the software as I said. So I'm just going to hopefully all this will work because it's still pretty new to me so I'm going to stop the share now and you've got me. Okay so what I'm going to show you very quickly um, because I just feel it would be remiss of me not to. These are now added into a robotic set so you can see the colors as well. So we have a Lego plate and frames, and you can see the colors on those, which means again, great building possibilities for a model. Also have um, the frames where they can stack them on, and again, lots of connector holes. Um, another thing that's new, I'm not gonna show all of them, so that's okay. Um, this is this cast wheel, it's a plastic cast wheel, do what you like to it, you're not gonna get it out without a, um, a little tricky maneuver. It also has a new connection on the top. Again, easy to connect. Um, the other thing that Lego are very proud of, um, I'm not too sure how well you can actually see this, but it's called a biscuit. And again, you can see the color, but look at all the connections on it. For, for me, someone who needs help with building, this is really awesome. And then um, what else you have, uh, this is also new. So this isn't new, a two by four brick. But what's new now is that you can add um, extra Lego to it. You'll see there it's got three axle holes. So that makes it a lot easier. And then the other good thing, um, as far as I'm concerned, well, so much of it is, is this uh, new tire and wheel. So you've got um, tires actually now connected to the wheels. So what's happening is it's gonna reduce friction. Hopefully, hopefully, your robot will go on a straight line. I, I think it's much better. So this is a standard um, wheel size. Um, however, in the expansion set, if you're looking for larger wheels, you're going to find them there. So, but in the actual basic kit, the Spike Prime set, these are the standard wheels. You'll also see that it's a lot easier to connect. So um, those are like the new Lego elements so that you can actually see, um, I guess, how um, quick it is to connect. So what I'll just show you very quickly now is um, just the sensors and I'm going to come back to them and the motors. So you get one large motor as I said and the two medium motors. Um, probably what I should have pointed out before but I totally forgot was you've got um, these new flexi wires that come with it and connectors. For those of you who have we do 2.0 you may notice if you can see it clear enough the connectors are the same as we do, but they are not interchangeable, so don't think you can. But I love this, better than the old EV, well, no, I shouldn't say old, but better than the, AV, the EV3's the EV um, hard black cables. I just find these uh, so much better. So then we've also got the sensors, which I'm gonna come back to in a sec, and this is your force. But again, why I'm showing you them again is because I really like the fact that they are rectangle. This well, this is obviously a nice slimline shape. They're easy. They're going to be able to fit in. They have a, a, a good number of connector points. Um, so, and then the next thing I'm going to obviously bring up to you now is show you the hub. So the hub 
is definitely what um, is very important because this is a programmable hub. And it's uh, the first thing I will show you, however, is that it has a rechargeable battery and it fits really snugly in there. And I love it now that it just pulls out and connects quite easily. So there's nothing that's going to really get caught. It just fits snugly in there. As you'll see, um, you can't use double A's, which is probably good for the environment. So I think that was a really good idea. But you'll also see that it's nice and light. It's a nice rectangle shape. There are lots of connector holes around there. Um, interesting little tidbit I, I, I heard or I read that the designers of um, the Spike Prime are actually sort of paying a little homage to the first Mindstorms that was released in RCX. It's sort of similar in size, I guess, but it has the yellow. Um, RCX was yellow and black remember yeah and um, this is obviously yellow and white but it was just nice to read that because I thought that was a, a nice idea so uh, what else do we have on here well um, we've got universal ports so unlike the um, EV3 it's um, it now has you can connect your motors and sensors into any of these ports so it's multi-port um, and they are obviously labeled A, B, C, D, E and F so you know where you're going but how to download your program. So you have two options. It has a micro USB connection on the end here. And there is a, a USB cable that's actually included in the set. But don't worry if you lose it. As I know, some, sometimes they do get lost, um, the cables, because it's a very common cable that is used. You'll probably find you've got them in your school or your home. Um, or you certainly can buy them in a shop like JB Hi-Fi. So that's your micro USB connection. The other one is obviously Bluetooth and there is a Bluetooth button there. So it has always been charged when um, you have your USB cable connected. So if you're using that when you are connected to a laptop, um, you'll find that's great for classroom management. You won't have to worry about charging them which is fine, but if you're using uh, Bluetooth, then you will find that you'll need to add it to a USB charger. Um, the other thing that I'd just like to say, is just my, from my own experience, that when I first got my Spike Prime set, um, I, I read that Lego said they come charged, which they do, a little bit of charge, and you can start straight away, which is fine. But I found that after I'd used them um, the first time, that I actually really needed to charge them. So now when they knew, I take them out and charge them in a USB charger. And that takes about six hours. And then from then on, I just top it up. Um, how long it lasts after that, I have no idea really, to be honest, um, because I just top mine up. But um, I have heard they draw minimal power. So um, I think that um, there'll, there'll be um, no problem with what you do with it. And I think it's just a matter of topping up. So it's actually going to be very easy for you. So that in fact is a hub. I think I've just about gone through everything. I hope I haven't forgotten anything because um, as I said to you, um, showing everyone in this way uh, when you can't see anyone is just a little bit um, different. Anyway, so what I'm going to do now is, um, this is your start on switch. So I'm gonna turn it on. And hopefully you can see that okay. When I turn it on, if you come, there's a five by five matrix display, which is really awesome. Now I know that students love to have the display because they can already, it's their robot or their build and they can put on an image that they want. So it's all about image or giving character to it. So, um, and obviously they can um, have their own images on, etc. cetera. So, um, oh, I nearly forgot. There is a speaker on the end here for sound, so that sort of reminded me when I heard it turn on. So um, there is minimal sound that you can get through um, the actual hub, but there are definitely sounds, but most of it comes from, from the laptop itself. So that's essentially the um, hub. So what I'm going to do now is to um, take you into the software 
and I'm going to connect the hub to the software and then we're going to go through the um, so just let me go on here and I'm going to share the software screen with you and hopefully you've all got that up so okay so what you'll see now when we go in is the um, spike pride well they call it the spike app so it's a spike prime set and a spike app. So this is actually the home or what they call the lobby page. I'm going to come back to this section because I'm going to go through it. But just to start off with, I'm just going to um, connect the hub and um, just show you the sensors and, and one of the motors working for now. So before I actually go into that, now I downloaded um, yesterday, the latest version of Spike. So this happens to be 1.2.0. Um, however, um, the new version now has this. So it's got a choice of the word blocks or Python. And um, I'm just, obviously we're not going into Python, we're going into the word block. So I'm just gonna click on create here. And this takes us into the programming canvas, which is a, a blank canvas almost at the moment. And then on the side are the blocks, which I again, I will come back to in a second. But at the top here is uh, a little um, picture of the hub, which says connect. Now at the moment, there's a red dot on there. So I'm just gonna get my USB cable and connect it. And hopefully, it will come up that it's connected, which is great. And um, so what I'm going to do is just click on here and take you into what they call the dashboard of the hub. And as I mentioned before, it has um, a six axis gyro sense with an accelerometer. So in here, it's going to give you the options, which again is going to open up um, so many more possibilities for your students and particularly for extension work. So at the moment you'll see it's showing tilt angle and you've got a your pitch and a roll. So those of you who maybe use drones will be familiar with um, those terms. And um, clearly mine's moving around because I'm moving my hub around a lot. Um, but there are four options here. So there is the orientation. So at the moment I'm showing up, and then right side, bottom, right side, sorry, left side, etc. Then you can have a look at the gyro rate. So you can read the X, the Y and the Z axis and acceleration. So that's all in the dashboard for you. Um, also, as well as showing the, showing the gyro sensor values, um, it gives you real time values for the motors and the sensors. Um, both here and then on your programming canvas. The other thing that's in here, and I'll show you um, at the top soon, is where you can manage your programs. So the hub itself, the programmable hub, you can download 20 programs to at one time. So you have 20 slots. They are numbered from zero to 19. And you can see here that when you go into manage programs, you can actually see the programs that I've sort of put in and been playing around with. Um, the one that I have just connected to is project 18, which has gone into slot zero, but then it gives you the size and the name, how long ago and when it was created and what slot they're in. Um, you can actually change the slots around, so where you want them to be. So if you want to change it to be in slot 18 or six or seven, so it's, it doesn't really matter. So um, the other thing that you can do in here, of course, is you can rename your hub. So that's really important when you first get your sets that you do number them all. And I would suggest that you number your hubs and your motors and your sensors as well, which I'm sure that you probably would be doing. And that makes for really good set management and, and classroom management. Um, mine is um, just one B for there. It also gives you a hub firmware version and it also tells you what your battery level is. So um, I'm just go back out of there. 
And now I'm going to come back into the um, actual software. So for those of you familiar with Scratch, um, I'm sure that this will look very familiar to you. And this is one of the reasons that um, I go back to the confidence with the confidence in introducing um, Spark, the Spike app is because it's a Scratch based programming environment. Um, so, so many students are familiar with it and obviously so many teachers. Um, when I first, I, I wasn't familiar with it, to be honest. Um, having really only dealt with Lego education resources, we have, I haven't needed to know Scratch. Um, so it was, it was a, a sort of a new world for me, but I had plenty of teachers that I know and plenty of students I know that have been giving me a bit of help. Um, it's a long time since I was out of the classroom, so it was clearly well before. Um, well after my day. So the um, so over on the side here we have the stacking blocks and all the default blocks or the number of blocks that come with the Spike app are all color, color coded. So you have your motors, you have movement, so where you want to synchronize your motors, you have light where you can actually change your pixels, your pixel, the metrics on the on the display, which is a lot of fun. Um, you have the sound again, which is a lot of fun. And when I get to that, I just need to keep an eye on my dog because every time I've been playing that lately, she's been um, pricking her ears thinking something's happening for her. So, um, and then we have um, events. So I'm just gonna pop back to motors and um, I'm going to bring down a few of these and just create a little program very quickly just to um, give you a quick idea of connecting the sensors and connecting the motors. So um, the first thing I think I'm going to do is to, I'm going to set the speed because we're going to be doing something. I'm going to set the speed to really low um, when we will be doing that. But in fact, um, what I might just do before I go any further is connect the sensors because that's what I was going to do. And I totally got carried away with getting the motors connected, so, but that's okay. Um, you can see now, um, I just really wanted to show you the sensors first, which I should do. Um, this is the distance sensor. So uh, the distance sensor obviously, obviously measures distance to an object or a surface. And I said to you before, um, it's what I like about it is plenty of connection points. And it's also slimline, so it's going to fit in nothing protruding out of it to stop it connecting to a model. And I might just pop it in here, which um, would be fun for me. But anyway, so at the moment you'll see it's reading 200 centimeters, so it's um, just reading in its maximum. But if I was just to bring my hand in here really slow, you'll see that it starts to pick it up. And I think it goes through back and reads to about four centimeters. So that looks like it's minimum as far as it's reading. So I think it's really good when using sensors that you um, get your students to think about real life application of this. Um, for me, I think the distance sensor and detecting objects is great in the car, making the beep, beep, beep when you're reversing, uh, walking into an office building and the doors open automatically. I think it's important to just bring that through, but there are, are many things that you can do with those and all the unit plans um, definitely have um, that connected. So what I will do now is just bring up the force sensor because this is great. Um, it's, it can detect simple touch, but what, it, but what it can do now is measure force, which is a great introduction to the, sen to the sensors. So this is a force sensor and you'll see I have it connected there and it's showing on E um, and it's connected to port E and at the moment it's not reading, so it measures force in Newtons. So it's, as you see there, I'm gonna apply force slowly and it goes through to 10 Newtons. Now I believe 10 Newtons is one kilo or thereabouts. So I actually, I think that again opens up some really uh, brilliant opportunities for students, not only in coding, but in their build design. I can think lots of uh, models that they can make using the force sensor when perhaps they have a weight um, coming down on it that's going to activate maybe some other attachment in their build or 
um, I can think of some crazy ideas that they would come up with. Again, you can see that there are lots of connector points on it, and it's also very slim line, so it's um, great to have. So you can see there, I've, it's showing us the, the real-time value, and in a sense, if I go into the dashboard really quickly, um, it will show you them connected here. So again, you can get real um, time value. So the last one that I'm can, going to connect here is, um, I think I shall just connect, sorry, I'll just connect this one to up here, might be a bit easier. And pop that in here. Okay, so this is the uh, color sensor. Now the color light sensor is the most used sensor in robotics. And um, at the moment, so it reads uh, reflective ambient light and color. Now at the moment, I've got it on color. At the moment you can see it's not reading anything and it's sitting on B. So what I'm going to do is, oh, I need that one. So um, what I'm going to do is just bring up a Lego colored brick for you and you'll see it reads red. Um, you can also see there's a number next to it, so all the colors are given a number. Um, let's have, we can make sure they all read the right color. So we've got green and we've got blue and we've got yellow. So, and you'll see the numbers change as well. <clears throat> so it's important to, um, remember that they Lego colors and I have to impress upon that because we do get calls um, now and then um, from those, some people concerned that their color sense is not uh, working or functioning anymore. And that's just because um, they're not using the Lego colors. So if your color sensor isn't giving you a reading that you think it should, then please just go back and um, check it and have a look and, and see if it is so. And then you may find that it's just, um, just not working for you. Um, but I'm just going to remove these sensors now. And what I'm going to do is to bring up a motor and make up just a quick little program with the, um, with a motor attached and um, a color sensor. So I'll just pop that one in there and I may just have to change. So I just want to double check here. Um, I'm going to just change this. So I'm going to go back to this program that I was originally going to do. Um, so if you have a look here with the motor, if I, I've got a beam attached so that you can see this clearly. If you have a look, you can see the rotation and then I'm going to go be able to go back to zero. So it gives you a starting point of zero on here and it's actually um, marked on the uh, motor for you. So um, it makes it just a lot easier for you and you can know where your um, rotation is going to start from or located as your starting point. So um, first of all, going back to this, uh, my motor is now not on A, I'm going to switch it down to E. Um, so clearly you can see that all the ports are listed there. And at the same time, it's telling me I've got a color on B. I'm just gonna set my speed down really low so that you can actually see this working really clearly. Um, then I'm gonna bring up, and you'll see now it's changed automatically to E, another block. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go the shortest path back to position zero. So now if I download this, um, I might just change that. Um, no, I'll leave it on zero for now. So if I download this, you'll see there it's hopefully you saw that. I'll just download it well. And it goes back to zero to the starting point. Um, so I might just do that once more just so that you can actually see that in case you missed it. Okay, and you can see there, well, yep, it's right, got on zero, which is great. Um, so now what I'm going to do is, um, as I said to you, we've got movement, light, sound, and events. This time I'm just gonna pop down to events because a hat's gonna start our program for us. So I'm gonna make a couple more little um, events. And in this instance, so I'm gonna say um, when, the, so my color sensor is on port B, 
So when the color is red, um, I think what I'm going to do is turn on the display, but rather than have that lovely smiley face, um, what I'm going to do is change this. And I think I'm just going to hopefully draw in a red here. For R, I mean R for red, not red. And, um, and I'm going to play a sound, which may be a bit tricky with my little wee one down here. Um, so I'm going to play a sound and then at the end of the sound, I'm going to run my motor um, clockwise, but not for a rotation, I think degrees and let's just change that to 180 and we'll run that. So now what I'm going to do is create another one just for fun to show you that I'm going to duplicate it by right clicking on the hat and bring down another um, event here. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the color to blue and quite clearly I'm going to need to change the R to, I don't know, a reasonable B possibly. Okay, so that will be my B. But now I want to change the sound. So if I click on here, so this is, uh, can only be done when you're in the sound block, obviously. I'm going to click on the cat meow and I'm then going to click on add sound. And <laughs> so I see that there are a lots of sounds. So, um, so I've selected bird and I'm going to just close that one now. And now I actually have bird selected and I have to go in and then now select it so it'll play. So we've got cat meow and bird and then I'm going to run anti-clockwise for 180 degrees. Okay, so hopefully that will should all work. Now, just to show you what I meant about the 20 slots, if I click on the zero here, you'll see I can actually click through to say two or three and um, I'll decide, I'll download the program into slot three. And if I click on my download arrow, well, actually what I should do, sorry, I'll just stop that and start again because we need to know, okay. So now I'm back on zero. So now it's waiting um, and I need to get the color red. So I'm gonna use my red brick and hopefully, um, well, that, didn't, that was a bit of a crash, but not to worry. Um, I shall just stop my program playing for one second and um, get it back. Okay, so those sorts of things always happen and they happen on, in, a, in a live workshop. So I'm just going to stop the program. Right. And now we're going to play it again. So let's get this right first time, next time. Okay, so now I'm going to bring in the red and it should go around for 800, 180 degrees. And then I'm gonna bring up the blue and I play the bird. So what I can see is obviously a lot of really different program ideas from the students again, lots of possibilities and including this to be a fun program and really getting it to um, join them, join the colors, join the images, get them working. So um, hopefully that's given you just a little bit of an idea of the actual blocks and the software and the programming there, because what I'm going to do now is um, take you up into the uh, unit plans and have a look at those so we can have a closer look and give you an idea of what's available for you as teachers. So um, I'm going to go out of here and go back to the home so that you should see that on your screen. So as I said to you before, this is the getting started, the lobby, and on here is home, start, units, build, and my projects. But the same thing appears, start, these projects here, unit plans, and the building instructions. So um, I think what I need to do, sorry, um, it tends to pick up, we've just discovered um,
today or on the other day that um, my hands are really red and for some reason as much as I'm talking about Lego colours it tended to pick it up so that's just an interesting little thing I, I that's just a new thing for me so um, what I'm going to do now this is where you'll start when you get your um, your sets and you've downloaded the app obviously and what I'll do is I'll move along this link the top here um, just to save a little bit of time um, we've got the start here which is creating a, a, like a Lego emoji when you start to make sure you have the hub connected. Um, inside every um, getting started and, and unit plan is a, what they call content cards and each content card has a lesson plan. Um, there might be four lesson plans, two lesson plans or whatever it is, but every one of them has the same help. Then you'll go on to connecting motors and sensors. So the idea is that you'll just quickly look at the motors and sensors. You'll build attachments for them. They'll actually just, what it says there, you'll explore the action and the reaction just so they become familiar with them before they get into the build. So, um, and then the third one is make it move, which is really awesome. This is building a hopper. Um, the whole idea of this is they're gonna build a robot without wheels. Um, first of all, they can have a race and they're all given the same build, but then they're asked to improvise it and have fun and it's a great challenge. And I have a quick video of that to show you at the end, um, which was taken at a workshop that my colleague ran. Um, and I just think it just really shows um, how it really can work so well for you. Here are the extra resources and um, I'm just gonna show you these very, very quickly. These are again, just very quick units. It actually tells you how long they take and they're just simple fun activities that you can do as soon as you get started. If you don't wanna go straight into the unit plans, you just wanna get your students engaged in something really quickly, well, you can do that. And then I'm gonna come back to the units in a sec. So um, I will come back to those. I'm just gonna show you the build. Um, what you do get are the build instructions for all the models in the unit plans. And I'm saying all because you can see there are only four there probably. Um, unfortunately, when I downloaded the app yesterday, um, the new one then for some, somehow I sort of didn't download all the instructions, but I believe I'm gonna be doing that tomorrow. So, um, but they are all there. What I really like about this is that if, um, if you don't want your students to have that structure um, that they actually get with the unit plans, um, this is a really good opportunity to say to some of those students you wish to extend, okay, here's a model. I want you to build it, but then I want you to code it and see what they come up with. Um, I've seen some of this happen and it's really, really fantastic because they take it on as a challenge. Um, they then they want to look at what um, the code was that was actually provided with the model. And then they can um, compare it and they can talk about whether they feel theirs is a better one or, or how it works. So um, I think that's a, a really great um, addition. The other one is my projects. Again, here you can go in and delete them, duplicate them, move them, rename them. It will actually just show you all your programs. And then last but not least, because we're going back to units, is the setting. And I think this is really important for you to remember when you first install your app, that you change the language um, and you need to tick Australia. The other thing is down in the help, it's just great. So everything that you need to know about um, the blocks and, and the app itself and the hub, the dashboard, renaming everything, everything that you need to know is all there for you. So um, I know sometimes people are a, just forget about using a help and they don't realize it's there. And so I just sort of felt it was important that I should show you that. So, so what we're going to look at now um, are these, these unit plans, which I feel an absolute bonus um, for the classroom. They really help with all planning and they're all linked to the Australian technology curriculum. So it's not just about building a robot, it's about giving structure, it's about giving guidance, and then a goal. Um, each of the units has got a dedicated theme, as I'll show you there, and um, we'll have a look at them in a sec. And they've got uh, about four to six uh, challenges, uh, lessons that increase um, 
they're increasingly challenged. So the students um, can complete them in 45 to 90, and I think tops 120, if not more minutes, um, because it has a bigger project at the end. So in the invention squad, um, students are going to become inventors and apply the engineering, so the E of STEM or STEAM, in the design process. Um, because I'm going to come back to that, I'll, um, I'll just take a bit more time with the others, just very briefly. The Kickstarter business, um, the students are going to act as entrepreneurs. Um, they're going to develop their computational thinking skills. So for instance, there's things like uh, track your packages, which we should all be familiar with right now. Um, keeping it safe, which I really love these two. It's making a safe, you can put a code on it, a lock on it, you can challenge people to see if they can get into it, etc. So that's Kickstarter business. Then we have life hacks. Students can create little hacks to improve their lives and work with data representation and manipulation. So um, they love it. So you've got breakdance. Um, there's a repeat five times. I have to say that um, this is like a little um, getting fit machine. So you can see if you can um, do sit-ups with your robot. In fact, my colleague has a video on our, um, our video page and through our Facebook page, I think it is, um, of himself and his partner and her daughter doing this. So you might like to have a look at it because I just had to dob James in because I think it's a lot of fun. And um, it goes through to wind speed, collecting real data from um, other countries in the world about rain or shine. So that's your life hacks. And then let's go back to the invention squad because this is what I'm just going to show you very briefly. Every single unit plan is, is laid out exactly the same way. So it doesn't matter which one I show you, but what I'm going to show you now, well, I'll just tell you, I mean, we're going to do super cleanup, but um, underneath it is one called broken. Now I know a number of times I've gone into um, run workshops and the students will just sit there and it's not working miss I want you to fix it in other words so they really um, their problem solving skills are minimal when they first start off but this is great because it's broken when they start and they've got to to fix it and to use it so I think that's challenging but the one underneath I really love and um, I know that some of you have probably already seen things in the paper about high school students who have made um, invented things for some of their peers actually to help them be more mobile and, and what they need to do. So this is designed for someone, inventing something for someone else and I think that's a really good um, unit plan to get into. But this is the super cleanup and it's about testing effectively. Um, it's, it's making a grabber, it's picking up rubbish, it's picking up rubbish in your classroom, it's just um, I guess they say it's up to you to save the world from litter bugs. If you click on more, um, it actually tells you what's required. So the spike prime set, obviously, um, an empty plastic bottle, a ball of crumpled paper, um, an apple or something similar. It's for beginners and it's grade six and eight. So uh, what I'm going to do now is play this for you. I hope that things are okay for you. Sorry, my apologies. So um, my apologies there, I'm just going to go back and share that with you again um, because I believe you had no sound so it's probably a good thing that I share that with you again.
so after that, we can actually go on further to online lessons from here. But what I'm going to do is click on the start. Um, and my apologies about the sound before. I just um, didn't have one of the boxes ticked that I actually thought was ticked. But anyway, you live and you learn with these things. Um, so when you go into your super cleanup, you'll see here on the left hand side, there are a limited number of blocks. And these are just the blocks that are needed for this particular program. So we've got the motors and bends, and there are more motors. But if you wanted to show all, then you can actually click on them and you can actually see all the blocks available. Otherwise, you just have the blocks that are available for the activity. Um, you also have a video here um, that we can watch again, but I'm not going to because we've obviously just looked at it twice now, so we probably don't want to see that again. So the idea is now you're going to build two grabbers. You'll start by testing these two grabbers. You also need a controller. So you click on here to build and it tells, shows you what it's supposed to look like or hopefully what it will look like um, when you finish your build. So you've got a controller and you've got two versions of your two grabbers. So if I just click on here, I'm not going to, you'll see here again, it's the picture of this particular grabber. I'm going to quickly scroll, scroll through the build and um, you'll see now it actually shows us where the um, force sensor is actually connected and the motor. So the force belongs to the controller. So once we've done that and we've built it, we go on then and gather um, the litter that we're going to need, a Lego brick, an empty plastic bottle, a ball of crumpled paper, a stack of Lego wheels, um, etc. So then we go on to play this program to test the two grabbers. Which do you think works first? Now I actually cheated um, and um, what I'm going to do and made a little video earlier so with a bit of luck I'm going to be able to share that with you and um, just to give it a go and if I Okay, what you can see here is I have a controller that's already made up that I made earlier today and one of the grabbers is already attached and just checking to make sure it's all working and then we have the other grabber here which we'll use in a minute. Um, I've just collected some random things to put in front of here, terribly random. Obviously I've got Lego in my house and um, I happen to have a lemon in the fruit box and I've got some rubbish. Anyway, I'm going to try and give it a go to pick up the paper first and as you can see it all works okay. We'll pop it in the rubbish bin. You might mentally like to think what you think is going to work. Let's try the lemon. Yeah, I'm not sure if this will be very good at picking up fruit off the ground. Be a very um, tedious and process that one. So let's try the Lego brick and that picks up okay. And how are we going to go with the Lego tyres? No, not so good there either. Okay, let's quickly swap it over and see how we go with the other grabber. You might like to think about how you feel that's going to work. So let's get out the paper here as well and see, okay, let's try for the um, Lego piece. Oh, no, we're not having any luck doing that. We can try with the paper, actually works with the paper. We can try with the lemon. We can actually find it works with the lemon. And we'll have a look at the wheels and we can work out a way to pick them up. So um, now what you can do is obviously you're going to have students already thinking about how they can modify their grabbers to make them far more successful, give them a few challenges and away they go. Okay, so let's get back to the software. Okay, so now we're going to go back to the software. And hopefully we'll get that back up. Okay, so um, the idea is now that students um, will modify their grabbers and have a lot of fun with it, um, talk about what works best for them. Um, they can use the grabber and then they can record their results. One of the really fun activities I did with students was to get them to um, have a challenge. So often they have lots of things on their desk in front of them and we um, actually had a challenge to see which team could collect the most objects off their desk and place them in another part of the classroom, so in a limited time. So there's just lots of things that you can do to get them to modify their grabbers. But then we've got five out of eight. Um, then they go through a test, they can record it. And then which grabber is the best for small objects. And then the last thing that they can do is a video. 
and um, that, that perhaps can explain what they've been working on. So those are what we call the, um, the content cards and the lesson plans are inside those and that is our particular program. So that's a super clean up part of it, um, activity in the unit plan. However, what I'd like to do is just go back into that unit and show you where we will actually find the teacher resources online. So they're actually, they actually connect through to your web browser, but I'm gonna click on teacher resources here, and then you'll click on more information online. You'll select teacher, And what I need to do now is to share this screen with you. And hopefully it's all good. So what I'd like to do, so this is where you'll go for all your lesson plans. And I think this is what's gonna really make it as far as being a teacher. Um, I think everything's done for you, which is really awesome. So please remember that all the unit plans are exactly the same. So again, it's going to go through it and I just need to click on this and it'll come up with everything I need for the super cleanup. Now, um, obviously all these lessons are based on the Lego education formula of five E's and that is engage, explore, explain, elaborate and evaluate. Um, so it will go how to engage students, um, explore, have, have your students work in pairs to test the grabbers, ask them to test the program, um, explain um, testing their grabbers by grabbing different objects, similar weights, different weights, similar sizes, etc. You can have a class discussion about the test results and, and then evaluate. So further down, um, it gives you ideas on igniting discussion, building tips, um, it's right through down to coding tips, assessment opportunities, which I mean, I know is really important. So definitely gives you an observation checklist, self-assessment, peer assessment. Um, but the good thing is too, and everyone asks about cross-curricular, cross-curricular. So we have language arts extension and we have maths extension, which is really great. And then the other, the other little bit they've added at the bottom Lego are career links, which is, which is interesting. So I guess you can have this discussion with students, okay, so we're doing all this, but where can this lead for you after school? So I think that's a, a really, really, really good innovation for them to add to the software. And then um, on the other side, again, it has teacher support, your key objectives, the things that you will need, um, and then the additional resources. So it has the test tables here for you to download. And so you can print those out. And then it has here the curriculum links, which are really important. So all the Australian curriculum links for technology are all listed for every different activity, which I think is great. They are all there for you. So that's um, really important. So um, what I would like to do though, however, is just quickly go back to um, show you in the, um, in the Spike app itself. So let me just share this with you. Um, just to reiterate again, what we were talking about. Um, so that all came from the Invention Squad and from the Invention Squad, you actually have to then go online. So obviously you have to be connected to access those teacher resources. So what I am going to do now is take you back to our PowerPoint um, and share that with you. So just quickly to go over what I showed you before I, because um, we're I'm mindful of time now, um, to, to share with you. So very quickly, we have the Invention Squad, which takes the E, um, applying the engineering process, kickstart a business, the life hacks, and really I didn't touch on it too much and I'd love to show you more, but the competition really is awesome for preparing students for robotics competitions, such as RoboCup Junior and um, First Lego League, and actually in competition ready is, is the only instance in the last couple of unit plans 
that you would need an expansion set. So um, then the next, um, like really very quickly, I'll just show you the uh, Australian curriculum links, just uh, obviously are sitting there for, um, we've just seen them for the super cleanup, but they just there so that you know that they're going to appear. Um, and then there's help, which the uh, curriculum links are there for as well. So what I'd like to show you now is the video I promised you of Make It Move that was taken recently in, um, in a workshop. And um, hopefully I can't help but... Just One, two, three, go. As is called the destroy So I think you can see there yourselves. It was joyful, as meaningful, engaging, iterative, and definitely socially interactive. So, and the last screen is really all about you. So questions and any quotes that, that you might need. But um, before we start answering questions, um, I just want to let you know that um, MTA have recently dropped prices on all their uh, Lego robotics, um, which is really helpful. Um, for those of you who are interested in knowing more, or would like a hands-on demo or quote, please get in contact with your school rep. Um, if you're not sure who your school rep is, then send me an email and um, with your school name and address and I'll link you up with your school rep. So thank you all for attending. And um, before I go, my, my little wee one, who's been my colleague, she has been so desperate to see what I've been doing. I think she thought um, I had food up here. Um, but clearly I'm not, so now she's going to be very bored. So thank you all for attending today, and I'm going to pass you over to James and Chris, and I hope they turn on their videos, because I would like them to. And um, I would also like them to be very helpful and start talking. So <laughs> thanks, James. Now, I do I need to unmute you? Okay. Yeah. And I need to unmute you, Chris, so. Okay. Hi, Joanna. Well done. Thank you. It was a great presentation. Um, is the well, in terms of the questions that have been asked on the um, chat function, the main one was around the you know how many units and what the time length they go for, and you basically covered that. So they're around about sort of thirty units or so. Um, Chris, did you? There was all. Of, there was about all there was in the questions, really. Yeah. Yes, yes. No questions. Be quiet. <laughs> so if people have questions, they can type it into the chat function now or you know, we'll give that a go first and then or after should I just that, unmute people? Yeah, we can allow people to unmute unmute themselves and uh, come on and ask questions. Okay, so and open up their video if they want. Yeah. So I've I've um allowed if people want to unmute themselves, then please feel free and turn on their videos. Okay. okay. We've got a couple of questions come through. Okay. Well, where do you download the software for Chromebook? Um, there's a link you can go to. If you type in Lego Education, and you've got to make sure you get that part, Lego Education and then Downloads. Oh, although the Chromebooks may be a little bit different, but if you go to Lego Education Downloads, um, there should be a link to the um, uh, yeah, Chromebook. There, there is, I think there is definitely yeah, legoeducation.com forward slash downloads. Do you want, Joanna, do you want to share that on your screen? I've just put a link on the app. Hold on. Is, the app is available through the Apple App Shop as well. Okay. Chris has put a link up to where the downloads are. Thanks, Chris. And yeah, Joanna, if you're able to take us there on the screen. Oh, okay. You want me to do, you're trying to uh, get me to do something tricky again now, are you? Okay. So, <laughs> no. um, you want me to do that? You may as well. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, 
I don't know why you. Um, okay. Oh. So, if I go to Chrome, I can just obviously type it in, right? So, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, I'll try that one down there. Okay, there you go. So if I click, it's it's going to show me Windows on mine, however, though, because it's um, it recognises what machine you're on. So if I click on View, um, it just then I click on the app. But the system requirements down here. Click on the drop down. <laughs> yeah. So there's your Chrome. Okay. You'll if see you that. Jump, okay. Yep. Yeah, if you jump back a screen. Sorry. I was just going to say, if you jump back a screen. To I don't quite understand what uh, you're saying. Um, go back in in Chrome Explorer in the browser. Yep. Perfect. And just the drop down option there, where the Windows 10 is. All oh, uh, right. Okay. Chromebook. Yeah. There you go. Just there. Okay. Okay. Now, any other questions popped up? Okay. Then we've got uh, Karen has, um, Karen uh, Robson has asked, brand new to Lego education and have bought Spike Prime. Where do we start with the children? In the software itself, where um, Joanna showed you, there are the sort of five tabs across the top where the unit plans are. There's a, a, a tab you can go to, which is start. I'll go and, into it. Yeah, there you go. that'd be good. I'll share that and I'll go to home. And then in home, it's got actually start. So if you start here, or you can go up here and start. If you click on start, click on start here. This actually uh, makes sure that your uh, Lego Hub's connected okay. It will take you through it, creating emoji for it. You prepare your hub, installing the battery, and then your first program, and you can work through that. And then when you've finished with that one, oh, sorry. Um, uh -oh. Sorry. Um, so when you finished with that one, you can then go on to the motors and the sensors here. So if I go back into start, your motors and sensors, then you go to number two and then to three. So that's essentially getting started. But you can also use these extra resources. Once you've done those first three activity, these are really good to get into to get you going. Um, it tells you how long each one of them is. It's 30 minutes. And if you click on more, actually gives you a little video of, for instance, this is past the brick, which is a lot of fun. And um, it just tells you you need the Spike Prime set. And again, you can go online and you can get the lesson plan for them. But personally, that's where I would start, um, depending on the age of your students, of course. But just one, two, and three, um, work through that, and then extra resources, and then you'll be more than ready to go into the unit plans, if that helps. that okay so yeah yeah that's a good yeah that's a great explanation i think yeah it's the right place to start does anyone want to unmute themselves if you don't want to can't be bothered typing up a question you can just unmute and ask feel free yeah so as far as the ages i think someone asked about the ages did you reply to that i mean lego say years five to eight but as I said, year four easily. I mean, I, I would certainly have this, um, I've seen seven and eight year olds work with it, but I mean, I guess in eight, nine and 10, and then through to the first couple of years of high school, um, very easily. So that's um, yep. how I feel. And then they've also brought out the, um, in the new software, 
there's the ability to code it with Python as well. So that might um, allow yeah. you to use it up into some of the more advanced years in, um, you know, beyond year seven and eight. And now with the new version of the software spike that um, obviously I just loaded yesterday, it actually has that option. So. Okay. Um, and Brad asks, how do you see it working for special needs? Um, that it, it, you know, a lot of the Lego is certainly being used in um, mm -hmm. special needs schools. At a couple of the webinars, we've had people um, you know, ask exactly the same question. And, um, and some of the other participants have come on and said that they are using it and um, having success with it. So it can certainly be used in schools or, or with students with special needs. There's, there's yeah, definitely. And I, I think it was quite good to see some of the comments from the other day. I can't quite remember, but there was a school, I think, in South Australia, wasn't there, Chris, who was using it? Do you remember? You're muted, by the way. I don't know why. No, yes, they were. Yeah, there was a school using it for special needs. Um, yeah. Yeah. And they found it quite successful. I mean, I know previ previous versions have certainly been used and, and I've been involved in that way because I've actually run some workshops for special needs teachers, specifically for special needs teachers in, in um, Adelaide. So I, I can't, I'm quite sure that. And if you wanted to talk about it even more with us um, at another time, I mean, we'd be happy to chat with you and help you. And Ben's asked a question about will Lego uh, continue to make EV3 or will Spike replace it? Uh, it's, not in, it's not intended that the Spike Prime is a replacement for the EV3. Um, the EV3, I guess, um, you know, can, can be used around grade five, but it, it just has a, a greater com capacity um, to do more complex things with. Yeah. So the EV3 is intended to stay in the market. And Definitely. so, yeah, there's that transition from we do, Spike Prime, then EV3. So. Yeah. Okay. And Karen's off to have a play with, <laughs> with the Spike Prime. So that's excellent. That's um, good. That's yeah. good. So um, hopefully some of them will come along to our face-to-face -face workshops, which I think are certainly a lot more um, engaging and fun. Than... Yeah. Oh, the hands-on is a lot more fun. Yeah, for yeah. sure. So, uh, well, um, Ben's asked a question, are some RoboCup teams using Spike? Um, they are certainly they allowed to use it and, and Definitely. we're encouraging that. Um, so yeah, they, but obviously this has come out and with the COVID-19 thing, <laughs> there hasn't been a RoboCup run, you know, sort of competition run this year. And so, so we do an anticipate that schools will be using Spike Prime. If well. you, um, if you actually go onto the RoboCup Junior website, you'll actually see what the, all the states, I don't know what from state you're from, but all the states and what they're running. And um, I know in New South Wales, from my point of view, we're going to be running um, some challenges and tutorials online from August. And we are encouraging those who've got Spark to, to really use them and um, as well as the EV3. I mean, it's a robotics competition. It's not Lego specific. 